They were called the Tantan Makut. The name means boogeyman. A hardcore group of 20,000 Makuts kept the Haitian people in line and the Duvaliers in power. The Duvalier created a holy state in Haiti. The Tantan Makuts are officially known as the Volunteers for National Security. Where just like uh, the SS under Hitler, they were given full power. They were only accountable to the presidency. And both Francois and Jacques Duvalier used to tell him in public rallies that they were the, you are the backbones of my government. You are entitled to do whatever you want. For three years, Jean-Jacques Honorat ran the Haitian Center for Human Rights in New York. He was thrown out of Haiti in 1980 for criticizing the Duvalier regime. Now back from exile, he believes the Makuts may have killed as many as 100,000 people under Baby Doc. Murder and denunciation were the, uh, the instruments of terror. Killing was the only way for the, to, for the regime to uh, maintain what they call peace and stability, what was labeled. Even in the American press, peace and stability. Remember that. And that's how you used to call the, the situation in Haiti, peace and stability, right? What would you have called it? <sighs> peace and stability, yes, but uh, peace and stability uh, that exists in a cemetery. Haiti was a cemetery. We went to a graveyard, if you can call it a graveyard. Mm. A dumping ground for bodies near the towns of Bonrepo and Titayan. Mm -hmm. Where local people told us that the Tantan Makuts had just dumped people that they had killed, disposed of them there. Remember, it was known that Titanien was for dead bodies, for people killed by the Tantan Makuts. Did the Americans know what was happening here in Haiti? The extent of what was happening, the embassies, the State Department, the White House? They knew, of course. We've been saying that Haiti was, the, was um, uh, America's best kept secret. If the countryside was a place of terror for some, it was a land of opportunity for anyone with the Duvaliers and the Makuts behind them. Americans could do big business here if they bought the right friends. Butch Ashton built up a multi-million dollar string of businesses under the Duvaliers. Large American firms that want to invest hire him for his government connections and his knowledge of how Haiti works. Uh, our famous Tonto Makuts, quote unquote, were trained by our US, U.S. Marine Corps, whether we realize it or not and armed by our United States government as well. Uh, we propped up a baby doc. We kept him in power. When you say that the Marines trained the Tantama coup, what do you mean? Well, I'm, I, I mean what I said. I'm saying that uh, we, and during, in 1961, 62, we had a US naval mission here that was supposedly training the army. And uh, at the same time we were training the army, we were knowledge knowingly training the militia which part of that militia was the Tonta Makut, but the militia was the volunteers of the Sécurité Nationale. And our weapons, our M1s, our rejected weapons were given to the militia and our new weapons were given to the army. And we knew this and we had uh, actual uh, Marines training these civilians. And to anybody that doesn't know this is the fooling themselves and not myself because I was here during that whole period. The Marines commander later denied knowingly training Makuts. Did you ever see any of the Marines training the Tantan Makut? Certainly. He has seen more of the Makuts than just their training. One of Ashton's many businesses is Haiti Citrus, which grows limes for export to the States. His groves in a place called Bastrac de Bizet were once used by local farmers to grow their own food. Ten years ago, the peasants leased their land to his company. When the leases expired last year, the trouble began. Father Franz Grandois and other Catholic priests tried to help the peasants when they were renegotiating with Haiti Citrus. But anyone pushing for a better price or their land back came up against the Tonto Makut. They say the Makuts resorted to torture to enforce the company's terms. What was the arrangement between the Makut and Haiti Citrus? They paid the commander every two weeks to control, to intimidate, to crush, to break any opposition. There are peasants 
in that area, as well as the Catholic Church, that say part of your method was to put a commander of the Tonton Makut on the payroll and to use the Tonton Makuts to enforce your agreement. Did you do that? Never. Uh, there have been people, uh, the mayor of the area, who happened to be a Tonton Makut, and is a leader of the area, was in fact on, not on a payroll, but he was on a consultant basis for security in the fields because of outsiders letting their cattle and their uh, horses loose in our fields. Makut. The commander came with 40 Makuts to this area to attack, to seek revenge. What specifically did they do? They would take the people, they would take them to prison, they would beat them. They would tie their hands and feet together with rope, like a ball, and beat them. What do you say to the allegation itself, that you'd hired Tonton Makut to protect your field? Absolutely not. Never. Except this one mayor who was The mayor, a who was a Tonton Makut, known Tonton Makut, agreed. But he was the mayor. We were aiming at the mayor. We were looking at the judicial system. Now, if part of the judicial system at that time involved Tonton Makuts, I don't think we can be responsible for that. No one has taken responsibility for the Makuts. After Baby Doc fled, they were formally disbanded, and some were beaten to death by mobs in the streets. Most Makuts still have their weapons. None has been prosecuted. Last month, while we were there, people were angry at the lack of real change, and when an army captain beat up a taxi driver, that anger exploded. The days of arbitrary arrest and harassment were not over. The new strongmen sent out to keep the peace are called the Leopards, army shock troops organized by the American military mission in the first years of Baby Doc's rule. The American military attaché at that time told us the Leopard Corps was his idea. The embassy now denies any involvement in their formation. It was trained by the American uh, military mission. It was equipped by the American military mission. They had the, the Leopards created as a force to replace the Totomakuts. They wanted them to be a counterinsurgency group. At least that's the way it was told to me. When James Byers got the Haitian government contract to train and equip the Leopards, it was 1971. There was a ban on all direct U.S. military assistance. His Miami firm, Aerotrade, did privately what the American government would not do publicly. His trainers were all American ex-military men. This is the first time he's talked about the Leopards. What has happened now is that the Leopards, who are a formal group of soldiers are now taking the place of the Toto Makut. Were they a crack unit? Let me put it this way. They were a hell of a lot better than anything else they ever had down there. But now what they are is callous controlled terrorists. And I understand after John Claude left that uh, they showed their true colors and went around uh, killing and beating people. That's not what they were trained for, but that's obviously what they're used for now. After Baby Doc left, one of the first U.S. aid shipments was new riot gear. The heavy arms started flowing 15 years ago through Aerotrade. What kinds of equipment were you bringing in? Fully automatic weapons, uh, thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition, helmets, uniforms, uh, 30 caliber machine guns, 50 caliber machine guns, 20 millimeter uh, rapid fire cannons. We gave them all of this. Well, they didn't even have toothbrushes or shaving equipment or underwear or anything else. The CIA knew you were doing all this? How intimately, how much did they know of what you were doing? Everything. 